Liz Truss and Kwasi Kwarteng's plan to cut £45 billion in taxes has pushed the UK economy into freefall. The value of the pound is dropping and political and economic experts around the world have expressed shock at the government's actions. On top of that, the International Monetary Fund has said that they're closely monitoring the recent developments in the UK and that untargeted fiscal policies are not recommended at the moment. Why? Because they might work against measures already in place to tackle inflation. Oh, and as an afterthought, they'll probably increase inequality. Now, this is more than a little ironic coming from the IMF, who are usually criticised for enforcing economic policies that increase inequality. But some Tory commentators seem to miss the irony, jumping straight to full-on freak-out mode instead. Right-wing economist Andrew Lillico posted this on social media. Embarrassed for the IMF, this is the IMF self-declaring as a left-wing body. The UK should now withhold its IMF contributions, which would be an incredibly bold thing to do. The IMF are, of course, famous for forcing free markets on developing economies. They are not a left-wing institution. Meanwhile, Tory peer Lord Hanan wrote this article for Conservative Home. So Daniel Hanan, no, the pound isn't crashing over a trifling batch of tax cuts. It's because the markets are terrified of Starmer. Next, we go to Lord Ashcroft. So he was uh, chair of the Tory party for a while, um, now sits in the House of Lords. He said, a currency trader has just told me that a driver to sell sterling was not just the mini budget, but a concern that Labour could form the next government. So this is some real solid evidence there. A tweet from a Tory about an anecdote that a currency trader told him. No information as to why they'd be particularly worried about centrist Keir Starmer taking the reins of the economy. Now, of course, it's no surprise um, that these right-wingers are trying to shift the blame because those who took credit for Kwarteng's mini-budget just last Friday are now looking pretty stupid today. This was right-wing think tank the Adam Smith Institute crowing after the Chancellor's announcement. So they said then, we are incredibly encouraged to see so many pro-growth policies announced by Kwasi Kwarteng in the mini-budget, many of which we have advocated for over many years. We also have a tweet from Robert Colville, who is director of the Right Wing Centre for Policy Studies. So after that mini budget, he tweeted this, not to blow trumpet, but cancelling corporation tax rise, tick, unapologetically pro-business agenda, tick, stamp duty, tick, opportunity zones, tick, reversing national insurance rise, tick, childcare reform, tick, action on energy, tick, all they need is capital allowance and it'll be a CPS think tank full house. These are all reputations crashing faster than the pound. The mini budget that they claimed, oh, we put all of these ideas in there now has crashed the pound and crashed the government debt market. Dahlia, it's all a little ironic, isn't it? I think if there was a left-wing think tank that had claimed, you know, a Jeremy Corbyn budget were he prime minister, and then the pound were to crash, they could say, look, we never expected the markets to be pleased of what we were saying. The whole point was to challenge the markets. We've now got here, though, a load of right-wing think tanks. Their whole raise on Detra is to say, the market is what we should trust. Let's have free markets. They've put their package into a budget. And now the markets are like, what the hell have you done? I wish that I could believe that this would mean that the BBC and other media outlets would stop quoting the IEA uh, uncritically and as if they, you know, are objective experts on the economy or neutral experts on the economy. But I, my faith in that being in them learning from this is not really that high. It's almost as if there was never actually a thing called a pure market that, you know, one day will deliver for everyone if it's just left alone to organically operate and to organically uh, function. But it was rather about using this idea of there being an invisible hand of the market in order to naturalize uh, the idea that the wealthy should just keep getting wealthier. Like the, there was this narrativistic setup, right, where you either have government intervention um, or you have uh, allowing the market to do its thing in a way that is like natural and organic. That was always a really false opposition, right? Like in reality, governments always manage the conditions and the parameters of economic activity. The distinction is that either they can intervene and shape those conditions in a way that benefits everyday people, working people, or they can intervene on behalf of the already very rich. And so what is called free market economics is essentially about the latter. But what has happened now is essentially the British government have overplayed their hand. And, you know, to the point where the level of 
political political upheaval and social you know crisis that is likely to be triggered by these policies that are way too far um to the right those conditions are actually going to threaten the kind of economic stability uh, that is required for you know neoliberal unfettered neoliberalism to to unfold so it's not obviously that the IMF has suddenly become socialist it's that they have recognized that right now the british government is failing in its role to create the political and social conditions that are required for neoliberal economic activity to continue uninterrupted uh, so to me what this really shows is that this whole idea of you know the free market was really a way of obfuscating the idea that governments should intervene in particular ways and now there is a dispute over the ex- the extent to which um that gov- the government should intervene in a particular way so i think that the whole concept of the free market has kind of been shown up to be um basically a narrative device rather than a reflection of an actual economic reality mm-hmm. 